Welcome to a discussion of compounding aseptic isolators. All information is presented in accord with USP standard number 797, the American Society of Health System Pharmacist Guidelines, and NIOSH recommendations. The compounding aseptic isolator, or CAI, and the compounding aseptic containment isolator, or CACI, are recent additions to the primary engineering controls employed in pharmacy and nursing practice for the compounding of sterile preparations. The isolator is a self-contained unit that provides a closed core work zone to fully enclose the aseptic compounding field. The core is directly accessible only through the changeable glove gauntlets mounted on the front of the unit thus assuring a completely closed work environment during compounding. The compounding work zone is continuously supplied with unidirectionally flowing HEPA-filtered air to assure a compounding environment meeting ISO Class 5 conditions at all times during operations. Access to the ISO Class 5 core is provided through a carefully designed D1 or D2 transfer device known as an antechamber or pass-through chamber. The purpose of the antechamber is to purge any airborne contaminants that surround the pre-sanitized working materials prior to their introduction into the critical core aseptic field. The D1 antechamber is connected directly to the core and is continuously supplied with HEPA-filtered air. The D2 design incorporates a timed purge cycle rather than a continuous HEPA-filtered air supply. Both devices are designed to allow the loading and unloading of working materials into and out of the unit through an airtight outer door without exposing the compounding core to the outside environment. The isolator is available in two different configurations, positive pressure and negative pressure. The positive pressure CAI is employed in instances where no hazardous drugs are manipulated. CAIs produce a unit internal operating pressure that is greater than the outside atmospheric pressure, resulting in the maintenance of ISO Class 5 aseptic conditions within the critical work zone during non-hazardous compounding. The negative pressure CACI is employed where hazardous drugs or compounds are used. CACIs produce ISO Class 5 compounding conditions in the presence of a unit internal operating pressure that is less than the outside atmospheric pressure, resulting in a slight relative vacuum within the ante and core chambers. This underpressurization of the CACI ensures that any unit leakage will be inward rather than outward to the environment for the containment of hazardous drug residues. Part 2. CAI Qualification Testing Proper function of the CAI is achieved through testing using a series of three industry standard qualifications of the process control capabilities of the unit, which are known as the Installation Qualification, or IQ, the Operational Qualification, or OQ, and the Process Qualification, or PQ. The Installation Qualification As the initial step, the IQ is carried out in accordance with CETA Section 2.03 to verify and document that the unit has been received in good order, installed in its proper location, and properly interconnected with the necessary utilities. The IQ should be commenced in the shipping department upon receipt of the unit prior to departure of the carrier. The following steps should be carried out to ensure an effective IQ. Step 1. Inspect the outer shipping container for tears or abrasions that might indicate transit damage to the unit. If the damage appears extensive, request that the carrier allow the container to be opened for unit inspection prior to acceptance of delivery. It is important that receiving personnel make a complete notation of any actual or possible concealed damage on the shipper's documentation at the time of delivery in order to establish responsibility for any transit damage. Step 2. Remove the protective outer carton, continuing to examine the unit for shipping damage. 
locate and inventory all enclosed apparatus and parts containers, and set them aside. Remove all skid brackets or braces that secure the unit to the skid during shipment. Step 3. Using the services of a certifier, professional mover, or competent facility personnel, lift the unit from the skid and attach any casters, leg levelers, or base stabilization components to the unit. If a lift system is not available, a minimum of two people should be used to manage the base and caster assembly process if required. Step 4. Transport the unit to its final location in the compounding area. The CAI should be accessible on all three sides and have adequate space for introduction and removal of the working materials. Install the unit in accordance with the manufacturer's recommended installation instructions to include the following. Prior to connection of the unit to the power source, use a continuity tester or electrical analyzer to verify that the 15 amp circuit to which the unit is to be connected has proper polarity and an uninterrupted ground path. Both yellow lamps on the continuity checker should illuminate. If the circuit has reversed polarity or an open ground path, make the necessary repairs to the circuit before connecting the unit. The isolator must have proper electrical interconnection in order to operate safely. Step 6. Remove the plastic shipping covers over the glove ports and install the glove assemblies. Install the drain valve and be sure the valve is closed for normal operation. Step 7. Open the glove port fascia and install the IV bar. Where operational mounting positions are possible, the mounting bar may be moved between operations to accommodate product changes. Step 8. Connect the unit power cord or cords to the power source and activate the work surface lights. Activate the blower and allow the unit to stabilize. The fan motor should operate at a consistent speed and the lighting should remain steady and without flicker or interference. Step 9. Activate the internal electrical outlet switch. Using a continuity checker, verify the proper polarity and ground path from the outlet. Both yellow lamps on the continuity checker should illuminate. Deactivate the outlet switch. Step 10. Verify the solid installation of all external waste receptacles. Make certain these hazardous waste containers are securely seated in their proper retainers and remain snug against their work surface pass-through mounting collars. Adjust snugness as required using the receptacle locking levers or mechanism. Step 11. For a thimble unit connection, using a visible smoke tracer, verify that negative pressure exists at the canopy connection gap by visualizing the inward airflow of room air into the duct along with the CACI unit exhaust. The manufacturer's exact exhaust air handling performance is absolutely essential in this application. Step 12. Verify the alarm set points using the isolator or alarm manufacturer's performance verification procedures. Adjust the set points as necessary and return the isolator to the certification set point. Step 13. Verify that all inner and outer door interlock systems operate as per the manufacturer's design criteria. Step 14. Using a non-abrasive water-based disinfectant cleaner, clean all exterior surfaces of the unit, paying special attention to the outer interchange chamber door seal, which may harbor large amounts of particulate contamination accrued during manufacture and shipping. Step 15. Using the water-based disinfectant cleaner, cleanse all internal surfaces, including the sleeves and gloves. Wipe dry to avoid streaking. Spray all surfaces with 70% IPA and allow to dry. Step 16. 
During completion of the unit setup, prepare an installation qualification and in-service document detailing all installation steps as the record of completion of proper installation and personnel in service of the isolator. Retain this IQ document as proof of compliance with the manufacturer's installation recommendations. The unit is now ready to perform the operational qualification. Part 3. The Operational Qualification Also known as the certification, the OQ establishes and documents the proper operation of the isolator in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. In the same manner as the IQ, a document detailing all OQ steps should be completed during this phase. All testing equipment employed during the OQ should be calibrated to an NIST traceable standard within the previous six calendar months. Copies of the calibration document should be included in the OQ test report. This document should meet the acceptance criteria specified in the Isolator Testing Guide of the Controlled Environment Testing Association, or CETA, and will normally specify and outline the following 10 challenges of unit functions as required steps. Airflow testing. Chamber internal pressure testing. Gauntlet breach air velocity testing. HEPA filter integrity testing. Particle containment integrity and enclosure leak testing. Recovery time determination. Unidirectional airflow smoke pattern testing. Preparation ingress and egress testing. Particle count testing. And pass-through particle purge time determination testing. USP Standard 797 also requires semi-annual active microbial monitoring. It is recommended this testing be carried out in the at-rest condition to establish the functional integrity of the unit and in the operational in-process condition to demonstrate the efficacy of the compounding processes employed. CACIs may also be tested in accordance with CETA Section 2.12 for verification of containment of hazardous particulates. These tests should be performed by expert personnel using the equipment specified in the CETA standard. Following the completion of OQ testing, an expiration dated certification sticker referencing the test report should be affixed to the unit. OQ testing should be repeated semi-annually whenever the unit is moved and following repairs or parts replacement. Part 4. Performance Qualification Upon completion of the installation and operational qualification of the unit, the Performance Qualification, or PQ, should be carried out to demonstrate the suitability of both the CAI and standard operating procedures to provide control of your CSP compounding processes. During the PQ, you should substitute sterile microbiological growth media, such as TSB, in the simulation of the following nine core aseptic techniques as your basic process steps. Assembling a needle in syringe. Withdrawing liquids from single and multi-dose vials. Reconstituting powder in a vial. Withdrawing liquids from ampules injection into bags, injection into bottles, preparation of syringes, attaching tubing, and use of automated compounders and pumps or gravity transfer systems. Be sure to consider other procedures such as PCA cassette fills, use of repeating syringes, and all high-risk preparation and procedures.